Welcome to my Topaz Sharp AI versus Topaz Photo AI review. This is the first photograph in Topaz Photo AI. So what we're looking at here now is we're looking at facial recovery and how much better it looks. You can see the original is quite a bit of motion blur and missed focus. So when I leave everything on auto here now is it's tense. So I have sharpen, it, sharpen switch on. I tried standard lens blur and I tried motion blur. Standard was the one I found worked the best. Now if I whack up recover faces, watch this now. This looks really clean and really clear. You know, you look at that and you say, oh my God, that actually looks really good there now. Look at the difference from that to that. But the one thing you'll notice is it's not the same person. The eyes are different. There's no way they're the same eyes. And that nose, look at the nose. That nose is completely different. So the problem with a lot of the AI recovery is, especially facial recovery, is it's taking bits from other photographs and superimposing onto yours. So um, recover faces, I've never found works absolutely brilliantly. Not as of yet, anyway. I'll always dial that back a small bit in Topaz Photo AI. That's my son. So I suppose I'm, uh, when I look at the photograph, I think, oh my God, that is, that's not him. If that was someone else, I was just taking a casual photograph of, nobody would know. Now that looks a lot more like him. You can see the, the eye looks kind of close enough, but there's a lot of stuff going on here around the eyelashes and whatnot. Now this is a really difficult photograph to work on. We're going to go and we're going to have a look at it in Topaz Sharpening Eye because this was about as good as I could get it in Topaz Photo AI. So let's take exactly the same photograph and pop over to Topaz Sharpen AI and see how we get on there. So here we have our photograph in Topaz Sharpen AI. I'll just click on standard there now. It's updating the preview. Now I'm going to skip through all this updating, but just while this one is updating, I just want to talk to you about something. We haven't seen an update to Topaz Sharpen AI in nearly eight months now which is a bit unusual. And um, to be honest with you, it's a small bit concerning because um, I would have presumed an app like this would be updated every three to six months. This technology is jumping ahead rapidly. Topaz Photo AI seems to be updated regularly. So are we kind of starting to see a line where Topaz are going to abandon the standalone apps, a bit like they did with Topaz Studio and Topaz Mask AI and JPEG to Raw and everything else. Is, is, is this the defining moment now where we're going to see Topaz Sharpen AI is no longer going to step forward as much as it's been doing over the last number of years? Not to update an app in eight months, it just doesn't make sense to me. I just can't understand it, especially given the days we're in now. On one or after bringing out Tech Sharp AI, which works really well. You have Luminar Neo, I just have to bring out Super Sharp AI, and that's mind-blowing. I'm going to leave links to those, to the, put those reviews I've done in the description down below. But you can see how much they're after improving. So I would expect Topaz to rapidly jump forward and they just don't seem to be doing it. Now, and may, maybe this is just completely me and it's the photographs I'm using, but I don't see it. And that's kind of concerning because they were one of the bigger players all along in sharpening software, obviously speaking, and also in noise reduction software. But like, even look at noise reduction software. You have the likes of On1, you have Skylum, you have DxO Labs. They're all taking massive chunks now out of their business. So um, I, for one, I just don't understand where they're going and what their model is based on. But I think the problem, personally speaking, is Topaz Photo AI is not better. Okay, rent over. Let's get back to the photographs. So um, this, is our, this is our results here now in standard there now at the moment. It's lens blur in standard, and this is now motion blur in standard. So let's go to motion blur normal. And just make sure that's switched on. Automatic. So I'm leaving everything in automatic for now. And that's motion blur normal. So let's skip through this and see what the results are like. So there we have motion blur normal. Um, reasonably okay. The eye is kind of all over the place. Nose is good enough. Teeth is probably the definition there. So we'll go to motion blur. Very noisy now. And here we have motion blur. Very noisy. And again, same issue around the eye. Nose is good enough. Teeth will get a bit better. So we'll try very blurry now. Okay, so this is very blurry, and that is better. That is better. No, it's noisy, but there is a nice bit of definition around the eye. The nose is sharp. Teeth and everything else look a bit better. It's not perfect, but that is better. That is the best one so far. So we'll try autofocus normal now. Okay, there's our autofocus normal results, and that's a washout. So we'll go to very noisy now. That's our very noisy results, which aren't great either. So autofocus very blurry. And there we have autofocus very blurry. Again, a lot of noise going on and whatnot. Teeth aren't sharp. Nose is a small bit better. Eyes aren't great. Hair isn't great. So no, we skip that one. Too soft normal now. Okay, there's our too soft normal result. And again, just still too soft. So we go very noisy now. There we have too soft, very noisy. That is not right either. So the last one, too soft, very blurry now. So they are all our options. And I think, was it either autofocus very blurry? No, it was motion blur very blurry. 
which should be the one. So if I click on motion blur, very blurry. Yeah, that was the best one out of the lot. But the one thing you will notice is there is quite a bit of digital noise and whatnot around the place. But that looks good enough. Again, not good enough to save the photograph, but I just thought I'd pick this really hard photograph to save as an example first and see how it goes. So what I'll do is just suppress noise, bring that, sorry, switch off the auto setting and bring the suppress noise control up to the full and see what happens here now. There we go, that's better. That's our result there now, more or less, on Topaz Sharpen AI. That's as good as we're getting that. So if I go back now to Topaz Photo AI. So here we have our two results side by side. Topaz Sharpen AI results on the left, and the Topaz Photo AI on the right. There isn't an absolutely massive difference between the two of them, but the one thing I will say is that nose still isn't right. I still have the recovery face slider up just fractionally because it did help with sharpness on the face itself. So um, also the eye in Topaz Photo AI, the one on the right there now, just isn't quite right. Neither two of them recovered the photograph perfectly. I was never expecting that to happen. I just picked a really difficult photograph to recover so we could see which one gets closest. Um, oh yeah, wait for the final edit of this photograph. I'm going to pop it up later on. You're in for a surprise. There, there, there is literally nothing between the two of these. Literally nothing between them. If really pushed, I would probably go for the sharpening eye fractionally, but Photo AI is incredibly close. And as I say, it is so fast to use Photo AI in comparison to sharpening eye. Sharpening eye badly needs an update. And it needed it yesterday. So here we have our next image in Topaz Photo AI. So this is the image itself, just fractionally out of focus. I'm zoomed in quite a bit. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you, this is the preview, the edited file. As you can see, that is pulled in nicely there. Now there's a nice bit of detail. There is some strange stuff going on in the hair and whatnot, a bit of patterning and things like that. But um, that is done a fairly good job there now. So what I'm going to do is that's on standard. I'm just going to try lens blur. Give it a couple of seconds and boom, there we go. Ooh, lens blur is not, yeah, there's all sorts of weird stuff going on in the hair there. So we're gonna try motion blur and no motion blur isn't right either. So we go back to standard um, and on standard, that looks better to me there now, hair and everything else, but there is a bit of patterning going on through the hair, but look. Um, so that's it in Topaz. Photo AI. So what I'm going to do is try it in Topaz Sharpen AI. So here we have our image in Topaz Sharpen AI. Yeah, that's that's good enough there now. You can see that's the original and that's the end result. There still is something weird going on in the hair above here now and whatnot. Um, but you also have it here too as well. There's something very strange going on in the hair there too as well. Maybe not to the same extent though. But it could just be different models now. So yeah, so you will notice above here on top, now the hair isn't quite right, but the face is, the face is really good there now. Just going between the two, there is very little difference. Actually, that's not quite as sharp. I'm just looking at the eye there now. So that's the eye there now in Topaz Photo AI. So let's go back and have a look at Sharpen AI. Sharpen AI is sharper, but um, yeah, that's definitely sharper. So sharper, Sharpen AI seems to be slightly better there now. Maybe it's a small bit too sharp, but again, you have to remember we're zoomed in quite a lot in this image here now at 89%. So, um, yeah, that just looks soft. That, that still looks soft to me there now. Or sharp AI looks, looks really sharp there now. Now the hair and whatnot, you might well say, oh my God, Kieran, I don't like that. As you just pointed out, Topaz Photo AI is better. What you can do is you can go down here to select and there's your subject. So that's our subject. We can click on refine. Via the brush tools and whatnot, we can actually modify our mask. So if I get the brush here now as such, so I can go on subtract and I can go on opacity of the brush, which is what I normally do is just bring it down along a small bit and bring the size up. So what we're going to do is the opacity of the brush, it's not going to have as much of an effect. So what I can do is just gently bring that across here and bring it down to here and whatnot. So what we're doing is we're decreasing the amount of sharpening in the hair so it's not going to affect the face then as much but let's just see there now if i click on update there now and uh, give that a couple of seconds that's going to redefine the mask there now again and that looks better you can see the hair isn't as it looks more natural i suppose that's what that's what i'm trying to say the, it, the image looks more natural here now and we go back to topaz photo way I, I, um yeah that looks good enough there now. 
Så köper ni AI. Får du AI. I'd probably still give that to sharp AI. It looks, it just looks sharper. Just around the eye and the nose and the mouth. Sharp AI looks sharper. It just does look sharper. Now it might be a bit too sharp. You might say, I don't like this piece above here. You could just go back and you can refine that mask again. You can even see our mask down below on the side here is, is after being refined a bit. You can see the darker sections after pulling through, they've gone a bit gray. That's because I went in, I used a brush tool, and I refined the mask slightly, turned the opacity down so it's not going to completely get rid of it, and you can paint it on until you get the effect you want. So which one is better on this photograph? So this is this is Topaz Photo AI, the end results, and this is Topaz Sharpen AI, the end results. And for me, I would have to give it to Sharpen AI. I honestly would. That, that looks, just the eye, the nose, the mouth, it just looks better. It really just does look better. Now, again, in Topaz Photo AI, you have the Recover Faces slider. So what we're going to do is our adjustment control. We're going to click on that, and we're going to see how that looks. Is it going to help it a lot? Again, it just changed the nose completely. Look at that. Is it just me? Are you, are you seeing that too as well? That's my daughter, so I'm saying that is not my daughter's nose. So, and, and you know, even around the eyes too as well. Um, now again, of course, there's a slider control. And the beauty of slider controls is use the slider, Kieran. It's as simple as that. Still not perfect, but it's not far off. That is very, very close. But again, even with recover faces on and sharpen switched on and trying the different options in the sharpening software in Topaz Photo AI, and when we go to Topaz Sharpen AI, that just looks sharper. I'm sorry, it just really looks sharper to me. So here we have our third and final photograph in Topaz Photo AI. I'm going to do this one really fast because I don't want to be wasting your time. So this is the preview. That looks good enough. No, that was really fast. Fair play, that was really fast now in Topaz Photo AI. That really worked well. And that is the absolute beauty of Topaz Photo AI. It's really quick. And the fact you have remove noise and you have your image enlarging or upscaling in there too as well, that's really, really helping. But that photograph, as far as I can see, is nearly perfect. And please remember, we're zoomed in quite a bit there now too as well. So well done, Topaz Photo AI. That looks really good. That, that was really quick and really fast, good quality results. We're going to go back to Topaz Sharpen AI and see could we do the same thing there now. So this is Topaz Sharpen AI, and that is motion blur, very blurry. The face is actually really good in that there now. That is actually really, really good. Wow. Face is really good. The hair is nah, not so sure about that. Um, don't like the hair as much, but the face is really good. I'm just going to go down here and click on select. So it's going to auto subject the image. And that is our, yeah, it's the person going to click on refine and we're going to click on subtract and we're going to bring our opacity down again and the size of our brush up a small bit. Somewhere there. And what I can do is just going to paint out the hair a small bit. So just maybe not to get it quite as sharp give that a couple of seconds there now and yeah up around there and up around the top and here and here i'm doing this really roughly now so right i'm going to click on update we're going to have a look and see how that works give this a couple of seconds and it's updating here now and boom there we go so here we go this is our end result in topaz sharpen ai and this is our end result in topaz Photo AI. They're, they're, I, I would definitely have to say the winner in this one has to be Topaz Photo AI for the, for the lack of work you have to put in. It does it really quickly. Now, it, it looks, I think it actually even looks slightly better too as well, the sharpening of the hair and whatnot down along here. It looks like the focal plane is all is all more correct, I suppose, being honest with you. Whereas if I go to Topaz Sharpen AI, you can see the hair is completely out of focus here. That should be in focus. That should be in focus there to a certain extent and along here too as well. It looks more natural in Topaz Photo AI than it does in Topaz Sharpen AI. So in conclusion, which one is better in Topaz Sharpen AI versus Topaz Photo AI? They have both of their obvious advantages. If you want somebody that's going to edit your photographs incredibly quickly, Topaz Photo AI all the way. If you want control, which... As photographers, we all want. We want final control over our artwork or over our images. Then it has to be Topaz Sharpen AI. Still, if you asked me tomorrow morning and put a gun to my head, Kieran, here's a photograph. You have to use one of the two of these and you have to get the best results possible. I would pick Sharpen AI. I would still pick Sharpen AI, even though it hasn't been updated in nearly eight months.
I really do hope the Topaz are going to bring out an update version of the Topaz Sharp Nail Eye because I used it for years. I, I absolutely loved it all along. Now, um, I just feel it's after being completely surpassed as of late by other software. And uh, just to give you an idea, we're going to go back to our original photograph, the one that I was saying that, you know, it was an absolutely hopeless case. And we can have a look to see how we can actually work on that image. Okay, so this is the photograph we were looking at earlier on, the very first photograph we edited, and why I was a small bit surprised I couldn't get any better. So what I'm after doing is I'm just after importing it into Luminar Neo, and I'm going to click on Super Sharp. Now you might well say, Kieran, why are you showing us this? This has nothing whatsoever to do with Topaz. It doesn't, but just look at that. Look at those end results. Look at that straight away. That took seconds, and look how much sharper that end result is in comparison to the other two. Look at the eyes. Give that a couple of seconds there now. Yeah, look at that. That is really good, and it's really sharp too as well. The nose is exactly right. Now, is it perfect? God, no, it's not. It really and truly isn't. But that is a lot better than I was able to get in the other two applications, and it literally took me a couple of seconds just to go in and click on a button, and boom, there we go. And that's what I'm expecting from Topaz Photo AI, and that's what I'm expecting from Topaz Sharp AI. So I really hope there is an update soon, because the more companies that are doing things like this, and pushing photography editing software forward, the better the results are going to be for the likes of us consumers and us photographers. So Topaz, come on, do that for me, please, will you? So that's it for today. Um, thanks again for watching and see you out there, everyone.